Are you Indian? Why you sit there? You can come here. You don't like? I don't. You like sit there? Like oh no, come here, come here. You don't have a lot of chance to see me. Come here. Take your uh, your shawl, your toga, whatever. <laughs> Take your property. Mm? Okay, you sit here with some Indian, looking like Indian. I'm not sure if they're Indian or not. <laughs> Yeah, sit there, don't worry. It's good, it's good. Yes. You came late, so they stop you, huh? You see, it's another regulation I can't control. <laughs> I also don't want to, because if everybody exception, then we never can uh, have a, a gathering on time, and it will be uh, walking up and down like a yo-yo, you know, a supermarket. Yeah, It's okay, you stay. Hmm? Namaste. <laughs> Where from? India? In India, Tamil Nadu, state called Tamil Nadu, down south. Where, where? Down south in India. What's the name of the state? Uh, Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Uh, Tamil Nadu? I speak Tamil. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's far. <laughs> in the south, they make hot curry, right? Yes. Wow, I, I ate it once. I <laughs> yeah. Very, very sharp. Southern curry is different. You, you think you know what sharp is, but you don't. <laughs> until you eat it. <laughs> I was very naughty when I was younger, younger master. One time we went to Hong Kong. I told you already, maybe you, some of you heard it. And uh, they took me to the Southern Indian curry restaurant, okay? I never ate Southern curry, Indian curry before. I thought, because in, Indian, in India I always eat curry. I thought, it's okay, it's a piece of cake. I eat it, I like. <laughs> when they're, oh, you don't know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Lot of oh, chili. It burn you, wow, it burn, and then you, you, it go all the way to your head, and your ear itching, your hair like falling down, and, oh, and your, your, your pipe here is feeling like on fire. Oh, I keep going asking for hot water, cold water, oh, God, oh, God. Okay. And the people at home feeling like, you know what you like, you know what you are, right? Why Master didn't take me to restaurant? Oh, how can I take all of you, for example, for any restaurant? Okay, I read their thought. Okay, you want to go to restaurant? I'll bring it food for you. Even if I cannot invite you, I bring the food. I brought home food. Okay, the same, exactly the same as what I ate. <laughs> so I tell them to line up outside, one by one come in. Open the mouth, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and go out. <laughs> if you say anything, uh, if you scream, if you make any noise, you never <laughs> have any food again. So they put in the mouth, come out. <laughs> <laughs> From then, I think they never wish it was me. Take them in. <laughs> and open your mouth, recite the five names, and go out quietly. <laughs> Oh, it was really hot. Ah, oh, so hot, so hot. I never ate so, such a hot food in my life. And how you look so beautiful and healthy. How can you bear all that every day? You eat that every day. At home, we don't cook that hot, Master. You don't I think restaurants hot. are more hot. Oh, okay. They just yeah. want to make sure to do yeah, some... At home, mother makes sure kids some eat, hot people, no? right? so <laughs> mother usually reduce the oh. hot. Then why do the restaurant do that? Just to stand yeah, out. People in the like crowd. that hot. Oh, some people like that. Yeah. Oh, good luck. Mm. I'm closer to Ramana Magarishi place, like mm -hmm. yeah, oh, very close to. Lucky to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why you come here? You're so close there. <laughs> huh? Living master. Living master. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They are all living. It's just that it's more direct. Okay. Yeah. It's like one in Bodhisattva, she helps also. If you're up to a certain level, she'll have you to go up, mm, for example. Nah? But in India, they always emphasize living master. But I wonder why the sick don't read that. Probably they miss one part of it, right? Oh, yeah, maybe the guru, the ten guru, he did say that the Grand Sahib, the teaching of the Master shall be your guide. And that's it correct also, but only to his group of disciples, because they are already initiated anyway. 
So he wanted them to follow the teaching of the master and not to forget. I guess like that, okay? Because as guru is not there anymore to keep telling you every day or every week, then you read the past master teaching, adhere to that. And then it is correct, yeah? But only to his disciple. Just like Jesus said, when I am in the world, then I am the light of the world. He didn't say after I am gone, then I am still the light of the world. Everywhere emphasize living master, even in Sikhism. Otherwise, why do they have to have the first Guru Nanak and then why second and third, why four? Why not just one Guru enough? Ah, all right then. Yes, tell me. We actually must, uh, after following you, we understood better the Guru Granth Sahib when we read yeah. and then we said, oh, this is what it means. Yes. Before we didn't know anything. Yeah, what yeah. Na means. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. What this and that yeah. mean. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even if I am not sick, I understood the Granth Sahib whenever right. I read something. Yeah. Perfectly yeah. clear. Yeah. Perfectly clear. Mm. Or any when scripture. The SMTV, they take the course out from Guru, Guru Granth Sahib about yeah. vegetarianism. Yeah. Then we spread the word in our community. Huh? And before they didn't know, know that, they said, no, there's nothing written in Guru Granth Sahib, you can't eat meat. Hmm? And uh, when we show um, that them, they, they, oh, and then they understand. They're surprised. Yeah, surprised. Yeah, I'm telling you, many religious people, they don't even know what their own Bible is saying. Yeah, they don't read that passage. They don't have time. Or maybe they're religious leaders. Some of them don't I explain. I think maybe just the Maya. Yeah, they cover, they cover. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Or oh, blame that guy. He's the best solution. <laughs> he, he's a trouble causer. True. Okay, now we go back to Kuan Yin. Mm. Okay. Fifth, since I am permeated with hearing and have brought hearing to accomplishment, so that the six sense organs have dissolved and returned to become identical with hearing. I can make it so that if living beings are about to be wounded, the knives will break into pieces. Powerful. Even knives will just break. I can cause source of war to have no more effect than if they were to slice into water, or if one were to blow upon light, There's no substance to cut. Yeah. Six, when the hearing permeates and the essence is bright, light pervades the Dharma rim, in this rim, so that absolutely no darkness remains. I am then able to make it so that though yaksas, uh, rakshasas, kumblandas, pishashas, and puntanas might draw near to living beings, the ghosts will not be able to see them. All these names are the titles of different ghosts, you know, the different type of ghosts. Even though they draw near a person, they don't see that person, so they cannot harm them. So Kwanim Bodhisattva even can protect people hmm, from the ghost. Seventh, when the nature of sound completely melts away and contemplation and hearing return and enter, so that I am separate from false and defiling sense objects, I am able to make it so that if living beings are confined by kangus and fetters, the locks will not hold them, I mean they can escape. In the old time, people lock people in some wood plank or something like that. Yes. She can do that. If when she's in samadhi, she can separate herself from her sense organs, because our sense organ is not very pure, so she say, when she really in deep samadhi and the hearing faculty, ability, really return to original source, then I am separate from false and defiling sense objects. She's talking about when she was physically in the world still, yes. And she can even help people to escape from locks yeah, and uh, chains. Eighth, 
when the sound is gone and the hearing is perfected, an all-pervasive power of compassion arises, and I can make it so that if living beings are traveling a dangerous road, thieves will not rob them. Wow, so much work to do. But only when she contemplates on the sound and separates herself from the physical body. You see that? She enters samadhi. She enters into the universal, all-pervasive, all-omnipresent, the universal power. When she enters and partake of that, then she can do all this and that and all this. You see that? That is the response body. But from when you are already very highly enlightened, you can partake universal power of omnipotency, and then you can help everyone anywhere. Now you practice quoting method, you understand about the hearing and the turn inward hearing faculty. Otherwise, I'm talking Greek to you. <laughs> hmm? Understand, yeah? Yes. Ninth power. When one is permeated, she talked generally, not to just her. When one is permeated with hearing, I mean with the vibration inside, yeah? one separates from worldly objects and forms cannot rob one. Then I can make it so that living beings with a great deal of desire can leave greed and desire far behind. She can even change people, uh, bad property, you know, within their makeup, within their body makeup. I think when a person praying not to be greedy anymore, not to have any lowly desire anymore, then Kwan Im Bodhisattva can have excuse to come and help them. Otherwise, they don't interfere with your free will, no? Otherwise, if they can do it all, then we never have any more bad people or greedy people anymore. You have to make effort. You have to want it. Uh, up to now, everyone praying, and then Bodhisattva can come and help them. Hmm. Ten, when sound is so pure that there is no defiling object, the sense organs and the external state are perfectly fused, without any complement and without anything complemented, then I can make it so that living beings who are full of rage and hate can live all hatred. Wow. Do something for us, please. <laughs> we want all this good quality. Mm. Mm? So be it. Swaha. <laughs> Swaha. Huh? How you say that? Swaha. Swaha. Yeah. Swaha. Swaha. Means so be it, right? So be it. So will that be? Yeah. Wonderful. I didn't know Sanskrit. I just guess. <laughs> I just get that is means so be it. And it's correct, huh? Wow, if I keep guessing that, I can speak Sanskrit too. Mm. Sometimes I guess it's right, yeah? Intuition. I did not learn... knows everything. No, <laughs> not physically, no. Inside, yes, yes. If I need, and then... Years after years <laughs> in this world. <laughs> I don't know, baby, I forgot. Is this made forgotten, okay? Otherwise, it would be too good. It would be too good, then everyone in the world would follow me like a flock, and Maya will kill me before I even were born. <laughs> he tried very hard to kill me many times. I didn't die. <laughs> Loser! <laughs> Eleven. When the dust has gone, and has turned to light. The Dharma realm and the body and mind are like crystal. Probably the true realm, not this realm, huh? the, the realm of reality. I mean beyond this physical realm. It's still in the shadow world, but it's more real than this one. Huh? Uh, the Dharma realm and the body and mind are like crystal, transparent and unobstructed. Then, only then, the Bodhisattva has to enter different samadhi. And when it reaches such a stage of here, then she can do this. When she reach, reach that stage of that, that, then she can do that, that. Yeah. So it still has some limit. Not like she can do everything in one go. Yeah, and not like all the time. Mm. When the dust has gone, meaning the physical body 
already disappear. Just like sometimes when you do meditation in the light or the sound, then you suddenly don't feel like you have any more body. Yeah? That's what she meant. The dust. This body. Dust. Okay? When the dust has gone, means she has no more sensation of the physical presence of her own body and has turned to light. At that time, not only you don't see your body, you don't feel your body, but you see the light. That's when you enter a different kind of samadhi, huh? Okay. Then the Dharma realm and the body and mind are like crystal. Yeah, because your body, physical body is not there no more. Just all light, all clear, all transparent at that time. Transparent and unobstructed. Yes, he said it here. Then I can make it so that all dark and dull-witted beings whose nature are obstructed, all antiantikas, can be forever free from stupidity and darkness, if they pray. But I'm worried that some dull-witted people don't even know how to pray, <laughs> not witty enough to pray. That is the only problem. If you are guided by some principle, some religious scripture or something at least, then you know, oh, we can pray. There is God. There are angels. There are saints. Then maybe you can pray. But because human beings are limited in strength of faith and lacking in virtues, so difficult to really pray. Maybe just blah, blah, <laughs> but not with the heart, not 100% purely praying. Therefore, some prayers mm, don't come true. Hmm? Or maybe not pure enough to receive, not worthy enough to receive blessing and help from saints. Even then, the stupid people can be intelligent. I guess when Kwan Yin Bodhisattva is still in our world, at the time when Buddha was alive, she's still in physical contact with all beings, so she can make this happen. Yeah, she can manifest herself into different position, different personage, and help people at that time. Okay? Maybe she still can help now. You can try. <laughs> 